Well, 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 we have officially started our Cape York trek and are super excited. Our first stop after leaving Cairns is the pristine Daintree. We nestled ourselves into this camp spot, which is close to the Daintree River. The Cape York trip has been on the top of our list since we left Brisbane on our big lap. The next day it was full steam to the Daintree Ferry. The ferry booths were very straightforward and just like that we were on the ferry. Ames couldn't go past a local ice creamery without getting some samples. It's never too early for ice cream, right? We continued our drive through Cape Tribulation. We didn't stop in Cape Trib as the weather wasn't the best. Pretty miserable looking day. Deciding whether to do the infamous Bloomfield track was a tough decision. We spoke to a lot of people leading up to our Cape trip and decided we'd give the track a go. Note the track is advertised as four wheel drive and not suitable for caravans, but hey, we aren't ordinary people. This was our first water crossing on the track, and the Navara and the Coromel handled it fine. The real fun started next, the start of the massive inclines for which Bloomfield is famous for. Now, we have been told about this incline, the steepest one on the track. If we could get up this then we would be fine for the rest of the track. It's concreted like this to increase traction. I was quite worried whether we would make it up. Not good. Thank God, we did. I let the car have a 10 minute breather before continuing. For all the inclines on the track we had the Navara in 4 low first gear. Well after a successful day on the Bloomfield track it was time to set up camp. A fellow traveller we met in Bingle Bay told us about this spot and it did not disappoint. You could swim in the water and it even had a small waterfall. So to get our van down by the creek, we did have to reverse it the whole way, but coming out was super easy, just driving out. So, we're going to come this way. Bring on day two of the Bloomfield track. The hard slog was over, so we anticipated a cruisy run into Woogie Woogie. It was a lot of going down hills. Not having the caravan meant we had double the amount of brakes to stop. If you're in a car and your brakes fail, you can be in all sorts of trouble. But we felt completely safe with our eight brakes in total on every tire.
We could see the Woodgy Woodgy Creek and knew we were close to the township. We ducked straight over to the Bloomfield Falls for a look. Our next camp spot was the popular Lion's Den Hotel for the night. We set up, then had a refreshing shower before exploring the hotel more in depth. They even had a small museum. How cool is that? Next day, we continued on the journey. We went past the Black Rock Mountain, which was different. As the name suggests, a mountain of black rocks. En route to Cooktown, we swang into Arches Point for a look. We trekked up to the lighthouse with the van in tow. We had it listed as a potential campsite, but it was just too windy. This rut was the most challenging bit on the track to Archer Point, so very doable. Check out the tandem wheels on the caravan. We love the independent suspension they offer. See you later Archer Point, it's time to hit Cooktown. Well we happen to arrive into Cooktown at the start of the annual Captain Cook Festival. How's that for timing? Initially we had one night planned, but that quickly turned into three as we were able to nab the last spots in town. We were glad to settle in and enjoy all the festivities. With it being such a small town, we were able to walk everywhere which was great. The parade was interesting, definitely had some strange floats. The local Samoan dancers were getting into the festive spirit and even busted out some unscripted dance moves. We watched the reenactment of Captain Cook's landing before heading to the museum to learn more.
After some great days in Cooktown, it was time to continue the trek up to Cape York. We had planned to take the Battle Camp Road. Check out all that bull dust. We had just pulled over to lower our tally pressure and cover up our snorkel. Great team effort, Ames. So we were good to go and tackle the dirt roads. The road was pretty uneventful, but that ever-changing scenery was pretty cool. We nipped into the old Laura homestead for a sticky beak and to make ourselves a bite to eat. We then headed straight up Lakefield as we heard the PDR was shocking from Laura and Musgrave. Stopping in at this cool patch of scenery, our first sighting of mass termite mounds. Once out of Lakefield, we followed this narrow track to set up camp for the night. It was a quiet spot and did the job. Next day, it was full steam to Musgrave Roadhouse to get some fuel and relax. You can camp just behind the roadhouse, which is great. Well, we're only a third of the way up and plenty of more adventures and exploring to be done. Join us on part two to see if we can make it to the tip, caravan and all. Now let's finish off with a dance. Be sure to give us a like, hit that subscribe button and leave us a comment. Cheers guys.